Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to use a correlation matrix as input in AMOS, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. Now, I know many of you are thinking like why would I ever want to use the correlation matrix anyway, just use the raw data. Well there are certain situations and times where you're going to need to use the actual correlation or covariance matrix to kind of run your analysis. So the most common one that usually that I've found is when I'm trying to check really other people's work. If I'm reviewing papers or I'm doing something and I read uh, the analysis, because oftentimes you'll see in a, a, a sim model that's written up for a paper, they'll include a correlation matrix with means and standard deviations. And, you know, if you ultimately want to go and kind of check their work, really the only data that you have is that correlation matrix. Well, you can use that correlation matrix to go back into Amos and rerun the model and see if it's uh, see if it's correct. I've done this before, uh, where I just was reviewing a paper and I thought, man, this doesn't seem like it adds up. Really, the correlation matrix is really kind of off compared to what I'm seeing as the final output. Um, and so I just went back in and you know and ran the model, recreated it again, but used the correlation matrix they provided in the paper. And what I found was that it was it was wildly different than what the final results that they said they were. So then I went back to you know to the editor and was like presented my results and was like I don't know what's going on here. If there's some just data inaccuracies or whatnot, but what they're what they're saying is is the correlation matrix does not add up with that, that final output. Um, so let's talk about how to do so. So let's jump into Amos here. I've got a simple path model um, where I've got the adaptive behavior, which is this was from, coming from a restaurant setting. Did the server uh, adapt their behavior to you uh, in the the service experience and the service scape, which is really you know the built environment around the service. So how was the furnishing, lighting, smells, all that kind of stuff, and did that really you know impact delight customer delight and then did delight lead to positive word of mouth or even this idea of maybe tolerance to even future failures because you're just so delight delighted by your experience so we have this simple kind of model a uh, path model right here with uh, the two IVs leading to its outcome variables so let's say that we wanted to uh, first kind of get the data from its raw form into a correlation matrix that Amos can use and can read. Uh, so we're going to jump into SPSS here. So in the variable view, you'll see in the uh, the top left, there's a there's some columns that we need to uh, to put in there. So Amos has an idea of like how to read the data. The first one is row type. So uh, and you need to make sure that you actually uh, include that kind of underscore right after row type. This is going to tell Amos uh, if it's a correlation or if it's a covariance. It'll also let them know if it's a standard deviation or mean. So saying that we need to have this type as a string and not numeric because this is going to be actual words, not numbers. The next one is uh, the variable, but it's labeled as, uh, for Amos to read it, is called uh, VAR name, VAR name with the underscore. And this is where you're going to actually list in uh, under there the names of the variables. Subsequently, again, that's going to be a string as well because it's not numbers. Uh, after that, you're going to list in the variable view all of the names of the variables uh, that were you're going to have in your Amos model. So you can see here I've got the adapt and service gate, delight, word of mouth, and tolerance to failure. So the next thing that you're going to need to do is if you don't have that uh, already is you need to get the correlation between uh, all of those constructs, those five, but you're also going to need to know what is the standard deviation of each uh, one of those constructs and also what is the mean. And you can easily find that in the descriptives of SPSS from the raw data if you need to. But in journal articles uh, or other kind of research, they should be providing that information to you. So you should have that. You're also going to need to include uh, under row type. Uh, the first column is an N, or the, your sample size, if you will. So you need to put in there what is the sample size. So for each one of these variables, uh, I've got 500. Next on the row top, if we go down, uh, I'm going to use a correlation matrix. So to, 
for Amos to denote that, I'm going to uh, type in C-O-R-R. -R. So that is the code, if you will, that um, Amos can read you know, this, uh, this file that says, all right, this is a correlation. And then uh, down here for standard deviation, you've got STD and then uh, DEV for standard deviation and then mean. In our next column over in variable name, you can see we're going to skip the first one because that's our sample, uh, you know, at the top. And then we're going to start with our variable names in there. So we got that adapt, service cape, light, all kind of listed right there. You can also notice that these are uh, at the top as well. Those were from the variable list that we just put in there too because we're trying to create that matrix. So you can see down the diagonal uh, of our uh, of our input here, we've got ones down the diagonal denoting a uh, correlation matrix right here, and then here's our correlations for each one of, you know, for instance, for tolerance to failure and adapt, we've got a correlation of like 0.42. So for each one of the adaptive constructs too, I'll need to put in my standard deviation and mean, and this is really kind of the format that it needs to be in. Now, if I wanted to actually use a covariance matrix uh, instead of a correlation matrix, it's an easy swap to that. So pretty much it's going to get set up almost the exact same way, except over here, instead of C-O-R-R, -R, you're going to put C-O-V. Uh, this is going to denote that it is a covariance. And so from the other thing that you'll have to do to change is, is you'll have to um, put the covariance uh, in here where the correlations were and instead of ones you will include the variance in there so it's a pretty easy swap over but for the correlation matrix here we're going to put ones down the diagonal and our row type is going to denote C-O-R-R -R. so after we've kind of inputted all this uh, we can file save and then we're ready to go back to um, to Amos so now in our um, our data file you can see um, I've labeled that uh, file that we just created correlation matrix path model um, and so you can see the uh, N on this as well as 500 and I didn't note in that so again the input itself and the sample in that you have to input the sample size so if I would put 1500 you know in there instead of 500 well the sample size when it comes into Amos would have said 1500 then so this is our input now and if you, you can take this instead of the raw data and it will run just like it would for um, for the raw data and you'll look exactly the same in the output you go to the estimates you're gonna see uh, the uh, parameter estimates and then you go into model fit you'll see the exact same thing that you would in the uh, the raw data so one last thing kinda of talking about using uh, kind of uh, correlation and covariance matrix there are certain times in Amos that you have to do some workarounds and in a future video I'm going to talk about that with how to use weighted scores uh, because that is one area specifically that it, Amos has a hard time kind of pulling up weighted scores across you know the SBSS data and really just wants to kind of bomb out with these weighted scores and the way to kind of get around that is is you use kind of the weighted score you put the weighted score into SBSS but then you turn around and um, and get the uh, correlation matrix from that and then use it as input so this is a simple path model but what if I had a full structural model too so, you know, these are, you know, composite variables, but what if I wanted to run my model as it really is full structural? Well, instead of having these composite variables here at the top, you would literally have to put all of your indicators in there. So for the adaptive construct itself, that it was a composite variable, I had five questions that made that up. And they were called adapt one, two, three, four, five. Well, I would have to literally put all of those in there. So this would be, you know, this column would be adapt one, adapt two, adapt three, adapt four, adapt five. And I would have to find the correlation for basically all of those uh, indicators that I included in there, along with the mean and the standard deviation. Would that matrix be really huge? Yes, it would be. Uh, and so you just have to make sure that you're really doing your due diligence to stay on the right row and column to input all of it correctly. Now on a path model like this, well it's pretty simple because we've summated everything to just its construct and you can see it's a pretty easy uh, correlation matrix. 
uh, more times than not, if you're reviewing other people's work, they're not going to give you the correlation matrix that's got every indicator in there. More than likely, they're going to give you kind of a composite score correlation matrix between those two to go back and uh, and kind of look at just to usually save space. Um, and so just kind of know that if I want to do a full structural model, I can with the input as a correlation or a covariance matrix. It's just going to be, you know, that much longer. So if you're looking for um, more information on how to use inputs such as correlation, covariance, matrix, uh, and just general knowledge of SIM, I encourage you to check out my book. Uh, it's titled Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, it's going to cover basic topics, but it also gets into more kind of step-by-step uh, examples of advanced techniques as well. So that's all I got today. Uh, I hope you all have a, uh, a great day, uh, and be safe, good people.